He's back, folks. Andrew Webster is back. A couple of weeks hiatus. You're looking good. You're feeling good. And nothing's really happened in the world of rugby league. Man, I'm, I, I don't even know where to start. But just give me your first reaction to what happened yesterday. Not surprised. It was coming. I can't believe it took so long for South Sydney to pull the trigger on Jason Demetrio. It's... Um, I suppose the question is, why did it take so long? I, we just uh, had Blake Solly, the CEO of South, do a rather <laughs> in-depth all-in press conference at uh, at Heffron Park where South uh, are based. It'll be interesting to see what they do next. But, uh, Matty, it's, you know, South are a very proud club and they've come a long way in the last 20 years under Russell Crowe's stewardship. But this has been the probably the toughest period they've gone through in quite some time, um, it's it's been quite a fall from grace in terms of performance. It's a results-driven business. Do you know that? Mm. I love hearing that. It's a result. I really, I don't know what, how many businesses aren't. But two, tw- 2021, they almost ran down Penrith in a grand final. As it currently stands, they anchor to the bottom of the ladder, minus whatever, 49 points adrift of the Titans on for and against. That's just not acceptable for a club like... South Sydney, out of, out of Blake Solly's press conference, there was a few things that were said that really surprised me, particularly that Jason, quote, Jason's coaching style could not get us out of trouble. And I suppose if I'm a South Sydney fan and member, I am asking, well, wasn't that what Sam Burgess was banging on about in August last year? Why has it taken until now to finally get the job done? They've take, they took board, two board meetings, even when it came to making the decision. Even though the decision, it seemed, was made on Sunday that they, the Black Soul was going to recommend to the board that Jason Demetrio shouldn't continue, it still took two board meetings for it to be decided. So, yeah, South, I don't think, and I've said it on this program before I went on a break, and I've said it a few times, I don't think Jason Demetrio was necessarily the, uh, the main issue at that club. I, I, and I wrote about it in the City Morning Herald today. I think there's bigger issues at play, and that is definitely... The struggle for power and all the different factions that have emerged at that club and when it comes to making or someone showing some leadership, they seem to be they seem to be dallying. So both you and I have uh, listened intently to Blake Solly this morning. I'll tell you one thing. In terms of a, a CEO fronting the media, it was a bit of a masterclass, to be fair. I mean, the way that he dealt with it and didn't flinch on a lot of the questions that were, that were at him. You can pick plenty of holes into it if, if you wish. And a lot of people will about some certain things that he was saying. But there are, and I will play some of the key components of that. But there are three questions that I've got for you this morning. And I think you've just answered the first one. The three are, have South Sydney made the right call here by removing the coach yesterday? The second is, did they do it properly? Not only yesterday, but to your point, back to the back end of last year. And the third one, of course, who's next? <laughs> so do you want to do you want to flesh out the well, first part of that? You believe they've made the right call on that? I do. Coach? There was certainly um, some debate about whether Jason Demetrio should coach out the year. Uh, that'll be interesting to see if that happened. That would have been interesting to see if that happened. Like in terms of uh, how many more fifty point losses could they have sustained? Um, it is the right call. It was the right call. It was like the way that things have started this year. As I said, their record this year is appalling, and isn't even so much how they're losing. Uh, what their losses, it's how they've been losing matches. So I, I, I'm surprised that it took so long. Okay. Did they do it properly? Because yesterday was... Death um, by a thousand cuts. I know Nick Pappas, the chairman, was in, was in London, but yep. they arrived at the decision that could have been made far sooner. Mm. Uh, again, I think that points to the, diff, the struggling, uh, the, the competing factions within that club. Uh, I, I thought the, they probably could have done it Three, three weeks ago, really. Like, they could have arrived at this decision so three one, weeks ago. One of the things that Blake Sully answered this morning about that was that it was a unanimous decision and that that points to a board that is seeing eye to eye. <laughs> yeah, I remember when, they, when the Dragons appointed uh, uh, Anthony Griffin, that was a, um, that was a unanimous decision too. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's rhetoric, Matty, that's what pl- that's what that's what CEOs and chairs say publicly, so they don't look like they've got competing factions within a club. What actually happens behind closed doors, and as I said, the fact that it's taken so long to make the decision, the fact that there's uh, there's no unanimous sort of belief that Bennett should be the next person in there, that's the next thing that's going to be the 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 uh, 
the debate at, at South Sydney about who takes over from JD, that it's 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 not <laughs> it's not a uh, just because he says that publicly doesn't mean that it's true. But that's what Blake's got to say. Look, I know Blake was is a great media performer. Blake's a very smart operator. But to be honest, Blake's got to wear some of the blame for this. Like, I mean, it's it's he's the CEO of the club. He uh, and in the absence of Shane Richardson, the last couple of years, he's been making a lot of the football decisions. So a lot of it comes down to Blake, and I think Blake deep down would admit that. Like, it's it's I don't think he's running away from that fact. I don't think there's a, a blame game going on at South Sydney. Uh, but he, you know, he talked about it being. He was asked. I remember in that press conference by Brent Reid just before that is it, the club looks like a bit of a rabble from the outside. Is that fair enough? He said, "Yeah, it's been like that for a few weeks." I've got to say, no, it's looked like that for the last six to twelve months, and the performances on the field are reflected in it. Righto, let's hear a bit of Blake Solly this morning. Firstly, talking about the outgoing coach. First of all, I want to say that um, Jason's an incredibly hard-working coach. Um, he's a good person. We've worked together for five and a half years. Um, very strong values and, and a great family man. But um, in our view, we just felt that um, the style of play um, and probably uh, Jason's um, management of, of the players um, needed to change. And that's no criticism of his, hard, his work ethic or how hard um, or how much effort he's put in. Uh, but we just felt that we needed a, a change in management. Is that the crux of the matter here? The management style of the players had got to change. It, clearly, they haven't been playing for him. Whether whether it's a personal thing or or whether it's that's a reflection of the players or not, the results indicate that that he has either lost the dressing room or part thereof. The fact that Blake is saying that his management style needed to change again, without sounding like a broken record, that's exactly what Sam Burgess, their you know, one of their favourite sons, one of their, the heart and soul of that club when they won the 2014 Premiership, was saying over six months ago. So maybe Sam was right. So why didn't they listen then? I don't know, Matt. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> okay. I would have. I would have listened to what he had to say. But they were too busy trying to, to paint Sam as the bad guy out of that situation. Sam Burgess made it very clear in his in the last board meeting where he where he fronted the board in August last year, and Jason Dimitri was in that meeting. He said, "You're not going to win a comp with that bloke there. Like he is not the right guy." And I've and I've seen Sam since, and he's and he and he said it's nothing personal. It's got nothing to do with uh, with with JD. It's got nothing to do with what he his opinions of Latrell or Cody or anything like that at all. He just could see preferential treatment and the way that certain players were managed as opposed to others and it had been unhealthy to that playing group and and without picking a side, Sam's been proven right. It's been proven right in the way that uh, the season's played out for South this year and it's been proven right in the decision that the South board finally made after two meetings yesterday. There was a question posed to the CEO this morning about his coach or the outgoing coach being treated shabbily. The response was that they gave Jason Demetrio every opportunity and his further response was that JD's agent saying that he's being treated shabbily is unfair. I think the way that he was treated yesterday was absolutely shabbles, if that's a word. Because it the way it went on. Shabbily. The way it went on. How on earth do you let a coach, regardless of your situation on the ladder, go out and coach a team in the morning knowing full well there's a board meeting up there front the media on the way out, have to jump in the car, do the walk of shame as the last man standing and then jump in a car with no word whatsoever. I know. It turned into a real circus, didn't it? That's being treated shabbily. That is being treated shabbily. That said, that said, Jason Demetrio has been given plenty of opportunities and was, again, was warned and, 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 you know, uh, by Sam last year uh, that... You know, he didn't think that the dynamic in the in the club and the way that he was coaching was going to yield the results that the, a club like South need. Like I think people are forgetting that that's not a that's not a club on the re that's rebuilding. Like they've got enough players there to be able to to um to push for a premiership. I know they've got a stack of injuries. He made a good point a few weeks ago, Jason Demetrio, when he said we've got four million dollars of of cap talent on the sidelines. But yeah, some of that's because of your star fullback being suspended. Out of pure frustration, so it's not that doesn't make it easy either. Um, but yeah, I, I, he had all the resources in the world. 
They've got a brand new high performance center out there at Heffron Park. He's got, you know, the might of Russell Crowe and two billionaires behind him. Like he did have all, like some cl- some pl- some coaches, sorry, some coaches could only dream of having the resources that South Sydney have. So, you know, and, and uh, you know, breaking up is hard to do. The song's right. Who sang that song? Petula Clark. Ooh, mm. ooh, there you go. I don't know. Anyway, Google, go for it. Anyway, but but <laughs> regardless of who sung what. Waking up is hard to do. <laughs> it is. It always is. It never goes well. It's, well, it's always, never clean. It's never clean, whether it's a player or a coach. So um, I suppose the big question now, Matty, is who takes over? That's the, the key question, mm. isn't it? There, there are other questions around the playing group um, because they spoke about this being a unique playing group, um, about Sam Burgess in the picture. The, the word about that was don't really know what his plans are. But I think it's crystal clear. You mentioned this a while back a long while back, all roads lead to Wayne Bennett. Here's what the CEO said about that this morning. Wayne likes success. Um, I know he wants to win premierships. And I know he loves um, the values of the club and what we stand for. I think he's made that pretty clear in his time here and since then about his affection for the club, the ownership, the board, um, the management team. So, um, look, we'd we'd certainly be speaking to Wayne because he left the place in very good shape when he left. Um, And he was great while he was here. He got us through a lot of really difficult times during COVID and um, a bit of a restructure of the um, playing group when John and Greg and Sam retired. Um, It was a pleasure to work with. That to me sounds like the ultimate job pitch to Wayne Bennett. (laughs) I mean, didn't it? Oh, yeah, for sure. It was fawning in its... But it, this is how good he was when he was here. Everything worked well. Wayne, 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 please. Again, but uh, uh, Maddie, I, don't, I think we should, like, Blake, as we've noted, is a very good media performer. performer. So um, let's get let's talk about reality, though. So there's been people talking to Bennett for some time. Uh, they can deny it all they want. Um, but again, this sh- I think this sums up when we talk about how factionalised South Sydney have become. You've got Russell... Crow, who is a 25% shareholder in the club, he's divested that a lot of that like to both James Packer and uh, Mike Cannon Brooks. So everyone seems to th- Russell. And again, what I wrote in the Herald today, Russell doesn't hold the whip end as closely le- the, as he does. But Russell definitely wanted Bennett and Shane Richardson back at that club. I think Richo uh, very wisely and shrewdly, and only an old veteran grizzled administrator can, used it to finally not only get the deal done at the Tigers, but also get four years instead of the three that he was looking for. Um, but that doesn't mean Bennett's still not coming. And I think Russell would have him tomorrow. And he's, if I was to frame a market, I've had, I've had him as the $1.80, $1.80 favourite. But I don't think a deal's been done, as some are suggesting. And I don't think it's got anything to do with Lewis Dodd. And there's a lot of dot joining there about Lewis Dodd being signed as halfback and whether um, uh, Wayne's, Wayne's insisted that happens. I mean, come on, you can't be <laughs> – a coach who's not yet arrived at the club can't be d- dictating who players are um, that far in advance. I just That, to me, just doesn't make sense. And, and, and from the people I've spoken to at South Sydney, it is not a done deal yet with Bennett. The other two names that have been thrown up to me from people at high up within the club are Steve McNamara at Catalans, former Roosters assistant and, and England coach, who I think, if not Bennett, would be very, very good – and the other one is a very much a left field one is Michael Checker in some type of role there, which is very interesting in itself. Okay. Whether whether there's any reality around Check, I don't know. I've reached out to him. I haven't heard from him. But Steve McNamara, so Mark Ellison, the football manager, is currently over there doing the 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 deal with uh, with Lewis Dodd. I wouldn't be surprised if he is doing something else. If he gone on a boat and. Went across the English Channel and spoke to Steve McRamara at some stage as well, but Bennett's in the Bennett's in the in the in the frame um, for sure. But it's it, I, I'd be very surprised if it's done. The other thing is, if not Bennett, then who? Like if not Bennett, like Bennett to me seems like the best option for that club. Well, I've said on this show before, he is desperate to create history, um, to become the first coach in, to win three premierships at three different clubs. He's 74. I know everyone says he's going to coach, you know, into his hundreds. But only a big club like uh, like South, I think, would have won the money and also the status and the the squad that they have at the moment to to, to turn things around. I think he would love the idea of uh, of trying to avenge what happened in 21. 
let's just put a bit of speculation around this because I, I'm trying to do, join. I don't deal in speculation. I know, I know, but I want you to on this one. Let's say there's board meeting number one yesterday mm. and board meeting number two yesterday. I would be fairly certain that at board, we- board meeting number one, they knew what they were going to do with the head coach. Well, why didn't they make a decision? Why didn't they announce it? This is where I want to speculate. And I, I want okay. to see what, what do you think would have happened in between? I mean, what I'm trying to say is, okay, if, if they knew they were going to move on Jason Dimitri, they could have done it in the morning. Mm. Were they waiting to make phone calls during the day to get all their ducks in a row to possibly say, reach out to those a la Bennett style? and say, we, we're going to make this move now if we know what can happen in the future. As in, I don't know. do the ring I, I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that. As I said, they've been talking to Bennett for some time. Mm. Okay, so it's already been there. Neil Sadaka. Oh, Neil Sadaka. Breaking up is hard oh, to do. Oh, very good. Neil Sadaka. I thought... Just, I thought <laughs> well, you, he's in the mix. Look, I, thought, <laughs> I thought Neil Sadaka had texted in. <laughs> Is no. Neil Sadaka still going? Gaz texted in, Neil Sadaka, and somebody else uh, said exactly the same thing. So breaking up is hard to do. So we'll hear from uh, more from the CEO, Blake Solly, and plenty of other rugby league issues to talk about. DCE, free to play. The clean skin defence worked, and the downgrade worked. We'll cover that. It's 20 past nine, 0457 736 736. Webby on a Wednesday.